Good morning, life enthusiasts. This is Martin Patella. I'm coming to you on September 25, 2022. And uh, this is uh, the health coach sessions. You can find me at life-enthusiast.com. And uh, I already posted it into the stream, but just in case you don't see it, you can also see that we have a chat line where you can type in questions or comments. So please do. Um, the thing I posted in is a um, graph and it's a graph that's published by the CDC, the utmost authority on statistics. This is governmental official uh, I mean, they may make mistakes, but when you look at the graph, it shows you the most common ways or the frequency with which <clears throat> with which people uh, end their journey and their life. And when we're looking at it, we see that the graph is two huge bars, one for heart disease, one for cancer. Heart disease, about 45%, cancer, about 40% of all deaths. So while the statistics says that it's 2015 or thereabouts, it's not changed much. Uh, in, in way of numbers, in the United States, about 3 million people die every year. That's just the common number, which makes it about 7,500 or 8,000 every day. That's just a normal turnover of population. We're not here forever. We all go. But what is going to be the cause? Well, one thing that's actually missing in this graph, and I posted it further, which was the article called Death by Medicine. In fact, medical system, as we have it, which is the pharmaceutical Rockefeller Carnegie style medicine, is in fact number three. But when you look at that, all of the other, which is uh, um, respiratory or stroke or accidents or Alzheimer's or you name it, all of the other ways of going don't add up to even one of these others. So today I thought it would be great to talk about the biggest problem we have, which is heart disease. And heart disease or cardiovascular, cardio as in heart and vascular as in arteries and circulation, is the system that's responsible for distributing the blood around the body, which then of course means energy, because the energy, energy is the ATP, adenosine triphosphate molecule, that's loaded, and ADP, diphosphate, that's unloaded. And there's this constant switching back and forth between the ADP and ATP, where the energy is taken off of the ATP and then back. And it's called the Krebs cycle. And in there, it's multiple steps. There are several things involved in it. Iodine's involved, niacin, as in vitamin B3, is involved, uh, and, and MN, like Nancy, Mother Nancy. Um, I don't remember the name of it. And uh, and ribose is involved, and NAD and NADH is involved, and you can find supplements all over, each of which will address a part of this circle of energy conversion. So we have been told that cholesterol is the number one cause of heart disease of heart attack. That is patently not true. That's a blatant lie, not just a little, because there's data that proves it absolutely false. And I have pushed an article in that says uh, the cholesterol con, as in con job. And you can read that. The statistics are there. 
So when a doctor is pushing on a patient a statin drug, a drug that is designed to lower cholesterol, it's doing the patient a disservice because you need cholesterol. Cholesterol is involved in the structure of your brain, in the sheathing of your nerves. It's involved in all of the steroidal hormones, which would be estrogen and testosterone. See the word stero, um, progesterone. <laughs> I, I don't remember all of the words or don't want to try and recall them. I'm sure we could come up with a map of all the hormones, but all the sexual hormones, all the energy hormones, they all are steroidal hormones. In fact, they're also anti-inflammatory. You may remember that if you, if your immune system goes into overdrive, doctors come in with hydrocortisone, corticosteroidal hormone, a preparation that is going to control and regulate your endocrine, no, immune, immune system to downregulate the inflammation. So anyway, I'm, I'm on the rant here telling you that lowering your cholesterol artificially through medication is as, I, I don't know what word to use. Let's see, let's call it what it is. It's a stupid idea. What really needs to happen is the following. In your body, when you ingest starch, Starch, as in, comes from rice, wheat, potato, sweet potato, all the stuff that is uh, very high carbohydrate. A starch is a molecule that's got three strands of glucose strung together. And glucose is a um, carbohydrate, meaning that it has only carbons and hydrogens. That's what it's made of. And the glucose has six carbons and I think 12 hydrogens. I don't remember now. Anyway, so the glucose is the single source of energy, right? So when you ingest glucose, primarily from starch, and it starts decomposing right in your mouth, meaning you could take something starchy, put it in your mouth and hold it there. Within 20 to 30 seconds, it's going to start tasting sweet. That's because the enzyme amylase is being released right into your saliva and it's digesting the starch and taking it apart. Once the glucose hits your bloodstream, the next thing that happens is that insulin is sent in to deal with it. Now, most of us have been taught and educated that insulin is there to regulate your blood glucose levels. Well, it does. But the primary natural function of this thing is to create reserves, to create fat reserves for days of famine. If you could remember, well, remember, if you could imagine what it was like 1,000 or 2,000 years ago when food scarcity was an issue, you would have days when you found food and had lots, and then you would have days when you found nothing and you'd go hungry. There were no grocery stores. There was nature. And sometimes you found it and sometimes you didn't. Sometimes the thing was in season and sometimes it wasn't. Sometimes you had to go for three days uh, from one location to another as a hunter-gatherer to get to the next food resource because you have depleted the local resources in a specific area. That's the nature of being a hunter-gatherer is that they are nomadic. They don't stay in one place because nature doesn't grow quantities and it's not easily stored. And there were fewer of us on the planet as hunter-gatherers because we needed a larger area and we needed to share it with animals and everything else. Then with the introduction of agriculture, which as far as I remember is about 7,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent, which these days would be Iraq, where Kurdistan should be and isn't in the Mesopotamia. 
that's where the cultivation started. Back then, it was a fertile area. I think climate changed and uh, it became more desertified, and so it's less um, less capable. But still, anyway. So the introduction of agriculture al al allowed us to store energy because when you grow grain you can store it and it lasts a whole year so you can even out the famine and it also allows you to have greater populations so more people were being supported on the planet and in the agricultural days uh, since let's just say 2000 years ago we have gone from half a billion people to one billion people on the planet. And then the Industrial Revolution came in. That started in about 1820. By 1850, we had railways. By 1910, we had electricity and automobiles. And by 1930, we started with fertilizers. And after World War II, all these industries that were built, chemical industries and so on, we had an awesome capacity to start making fertilizer, NPK. That's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And when you put that on the field, everything grows faster, but growing faster and bigger and greater yield does not necessarily mean better, better nutrition. What we have is we have volume and we have calories, but we don't have nutrients. Anyway, so the story of cholesterol, right? We put glucose into the bloodstream insulin comes in and its job is to convert that thing into a triglyceride, which then is convert, converted into the adipose tissue, white fat on your belly, on your tush, on your legs, wherever it goes, right? Just makes you fatter. It's stored for when it's needed. Of course, now that we have endless supply of this food, more than we can possibly consume, more than we can possibly use. And we feed the body with food that is calorie rich, but nutrient poor. This is an important point. When you eat something that is low nutrient density, such as uh, based on wheat or soy or corn, uh, let's imagine pizza or lasagna or uh, I don't know what other foods, something with corn, tacos. These things are supplying a lot of energy, but not much nutrients. So at the end of the meal, your body says, feed me. Not because it needs calories, but because it needs nutrients. So when you repeat that cycle, you're going to overfeed in calories, you're going to overfeed the energy need, and you're going to start creating fat deposits. And the only reversal of this is from nutrition. And the, the reversal is with high nutrient density foods. So we make that. Our own brand is Exula, that's spelled E-X-S-U-S-U-L-A. I'll send you a link after a while. And uh, these foods are high density nutrients. You can find it naturally too in lettuce, well, I mean salad, lettuce, cucumber, radish, uh, carrot, you name it. All these things are much higher nutrient density than um, grain, like wheat, corn, rye, barley, unless, <laughs> We have an interesting product. It's called Nature's Gold and Barley Gold. And that's a special kind of barley that has been grown on a modified soil. 
as an agri-engineer who's gone to the field, evaluated the soil, and made sure that all the nutrients that are required are present in the soil. Then they plant the selected grain, and then they grow that, and then they sort out all the viable grain and throw away the less desirable. And then they sprout that, and just as it starts sprouting, they dry it and mill it. So that product, even though it's grain, it's actually highly ava nutritionally available. The uh, absorbability is about 97%, which is really high. Most foods are 40, 50. So take a look at that. That's called barley gold and nature's gold. We sell it under the brand Agaya Thera, which is also our house brand. Anyway, so there I am telling you the story of cholesterol, right? If you want high cholesterol, you're going to eat low nutrient density, high calorie density foods. The other way to get lots of nutrients into your body, believe it or not, is to eat animal food, animal flesh, as in like fish or poultry or meat, because that stuff has been... Well, those those are grass eaters or possibly grain and seed eaters that have converted that energy and stored it into themselves. So you are now getting the desirables, which is proteins that are broken down into amino, amino acids. And those are super desirable, high density foods that you bring into your body. So we have found that people who are on the steak and salad diet do a lot better nutritionally and health-wise than those who are on the pizza diet. So then the in-between in step is homocysteine. So when you are watching the blood tests, let's just say that you get your blood test. If you have high cholesterol level, you will have the HDL and LDL. HDL is the high density that's of no concern. That's the right cholesterol. LDL, that's the low density cholesterol. And that's the stuff that I'm talking about that's created by eating food that's too rich in calories. So cut back on grains, cut back on wheat, rice, potato, and that. Then the next step is the homocysteine, which is the inflammatory molecule that's in between, and lipoprotein A, which is the marker that tells you that your diet is too hot. If I were to give you an example, um, for example, with automobiles, we have two types of engines. We have the diesel engine and the gasoline. And the diesel is a much thicker, yeah, thicker, thicker fuel that requires a higher pressure and higher temperature to be combusted. So the diesel engine runs at much higher compression and much higher temperature. Whereas the gasoline engine, gasoline is easily combustible. So it's much lower compression and a lower temperature as well. So if you switch the fuels, if you put gasoline into a um, diesel engine, you will burn it out. It will just flare and uh, you destroy it. If you put diesel into the gasoline engine, you gum it up. It will not burn properly. It will just stall. Well, we have people like that. We have the two main types. One type, the um, call them hunters. They are exceedingly good at converting food into energy. So they need to be given slow burning fuel. Fat is slow burning. Carbohydrate is fast burning. It's like kindling and newspaper in a fireplace. It flares quick, burns with high flame, and then goes out. So when you have this high conversion facility, you end up having spikes of glucose, hyper, what's it called? Hyperglycemia. And then that's followed by hypoglycemia because you burn it out very quickly.
On the other hand, if you have one of the less effective ones, the types that make great vegetarians, the types that do okay on fruit and salad all, all day, all year, they are very poor at converting uh, food into energy. And they need to have the help of eating easy energy sources, which are fruits, vegetables. All of this, all of this conversion, this, this Krebs cycle, creates free radicals. Free radical is like a fire. Like imagine that you are burning a charcoal in your barbecue. That charcoal is glowing red hot and whatever it touches, it would burn. But if you put it in the re at reasonable distance, it just cooks, right? Well, if you try to hold that charcoal, that glowing red amber, ember in your hand you can't hold on to it but you can toss it back and forth so that uh, the skin doesn't heat up so you can actually manage it well a free radical from a chemical standpoint is a molecule or we should call it an ion that is lacking an electron the process of oxidation or rusting is the process of taking away electrons. Acids do that. So acid rain, you can watch it on your car, right? Your bumper or your fender uh, starts rusting as time goes on. And the rusting is in fact the effect of oxidation. And the oxidation is that effect of taking away of electrons. In a human body, it looks like wrinkles and uh, what else? Blemishes, uneven skin tone, signs of aging. We all have them, but you can slow it down a lot. I think it's reversible, but I'm still working on that. Anyway, so these free radicals are natural effect of natural energy generation. You always get them. For that, to extinguish the fires or to keep it in control, sort of like to have a container around this hot glowing barbecue, you need to have uh, antioxidants. And these antioxidants are primarily pigments that come from plants. I mean, a lot of them are well known, right? Vitamin C, D, E, A, B, K, those are some are water soluble, some are fat soluble, but in general, these vitamins are the, these antioxidants that will exchange, deliver the missing electron, right? Like you want to bring the electron that's missing, put it onto the molecule that's lacking it, and you neutralize it. We have um, something called ORAC, O R A C which is a measure of the oxidation reduction capacity. And some things like blueberries have higher ORAC than, I don't know, what else? <laughs> there are, like this has always been evaluated, like how, how high is this on the ORAC, ORAC uh, schedule? No, chart. Um, so the higher the number, the more molecules this is capable of um, extinguishing or neutralizing. So in this, uh, I mentioned Exula, we have these products mixed together in such way that they are very good at extinguishing this. And you can go out there online and listen to lectures and you will hear about acerola and schizandra and uh, noni juice and uh, oh, all kinds of phytochemicals from different plants, right? Uh, mangosteen is another famous one. But there are many, many plants that do this, right? The darker the pigment, the, usually the more efficiency in controlling or in providing these. 
So you always hear, eat the rainbow, right? Eat the red things, eat the orange things, brown things, uh, blue things, green, th green things. You need all of that in order to control it. So that's the free radical problem. That's the triglyceride problem. I, I made some notes to uh, go over it. So one important concept here is quantity, right? Quantity or volume. Um, I'm talking about a fire, right? If you have a house fire and you come to it with a garden hose, the concept essentially is correct. You're bringing water to the fire, but you, you don't have the volume, right? You could put out a little grass fire with a garden hose, but you will not put a house fire out. You need a hydrant and maybe three of these fire hoses that are going to just put sufficient volume of water to finally um, put out the fire. The reason you're putting out the fire with water is because you're limiting access to oxygen, right? When you remove access to oxygen, fire goes out. Oxygen is the ultimate oxidizer. All right, so about what to do with our most popular, quote unquote, way of leaving this world prematurely with heart disease, right? So what are, what are the things going on? So number one is we need to deal with clogging of the arteries. Now, I talked about cholesterol, right? Cholesterol is what clogs the arteries. But the reason it does that is because you are cre creating damage within. If you could visualize, the artery itself is a clear, is a pipe, sort of a pipe, right? It's a round vessel. And the surface, <clears throat> the surface inside it is supposed to be smooth as a mirror, lubricated, and nothing should stick to it. But the um, uh, free radicals are creating damage. They behave like little razor blades. They just slice and cut. And, and the cholesterol that's brought there is used as a caulking material. Like you're trying to patch the surface so that it becomes smooth again. But the cholesterol is somewhat sticky. And so as you go, it starts creating the... Um, the coating on the inside. And so the volume that you can put through is diminishing. So that's, that's essentially causing you the clogging of the arteries, cholesterol. So we don't want the cholesterol, but the way we don't want the cholesterol is by preventing the LDL, which is by eating food that's lesser temperature for burning. The second thing is the hardening of the arteries, which is caused primarily by fibrin. Fibrin or fibrin is the scar tissue in the body. Every time there's a bit of an injury, it doesn't, if the, if the immune system is busy, it slaps on a piece of fibrin to hold it together. And you see that on the surface, if you cut yourself, you will see a scar. The white tissue that's uh, on your finger is going to be a scar. I'm looking for a scar on my, on my hand. And uh, what's interesting is that I can no longer find it. I used to be able to. But for many years now, I have been ingesting fibrinolytic enzymes. Fibrinolytic, fibrin dissolving. Uh, the most common one is called serapeptase or serapeptidase. There's also another one known as CAPROSE. But proteolytic, protein dissolving enzymes in general are helping. So the products, you can look it up on, on our website. There's the enzymes, systemic. And under the systemic enzymes, we have, uh, I think, five or six choices. And these enzymes really help. Uh, so, uh, serapeptase is great at 
reducing the stiffness of things. That would be in your joints, but also in your arteries or in the circulatory system. Natokinase is another very popular enzyme because that helps to reduce the stickiness, the, uh, the cross-linking of the, what are they called, platelets in the blood. Like normally you would like to have the ability to create a scab if you cut yourself, right? Like if you cut yourself and, the, and blood starts coming out through the skin, before you know it, it uh, stops running because the platelets have come in there and cross-linked and created a scab and everything's fine. But if this sort of process is going on on the inside, it will create a blood clot and a blood clot will clog an, a blood vessel. Now, if it clogs uh, one of the blood supply lines in your heart, you will have a heart attack, infarction. Part of your heart will die because it will not have supply of oxygen. If it's small, then you just have a piece of the function missing. If it's large, it's over. Same thing can happen in your brain. If a blood clots arrives in your brain and cuts off blood supply to part of your brain, you will have various sizes of trouble. Right? You will have a mini stroke where only part of your face will go paralyzed, or you will have a major stroke where uh, you lose the use of half of your body, where you won't be able to walk properly, talk properly, feed yourself. And if it's bad enough, you'll just lose half your brain. And if it's bad, bad, bad enough, it's so massive that, that you just die off that. So that's, that's the blood clotting, unwanted blood clotting, that normally is in the mainstream, it's treated with uh, blood thinners, like warfarin, which is... Uh, known as the rat poison. At high concentration, warfarin is given to pests. And when they ingest it, they bleed internally because the, their blood becomes so thin that they have these internal bleeds and die of it. Uh, with us humans, doctors have to control that because you will have internal bleeds. You will have bruising and you will have... Uh, yeah, well, that's the most common one, right? Like hematomas all over under the skin. And you need to be very careful because if you overthin the blood, you cause the patient to bleed internally and die. Well, the enzymes, of course, they are not popular with the pharmaceuticals because they can't make as much money on it, are doing a very fine job of keeping your blood from coagulating in the wrong place. So you could be on, on an enzyme instead of on a uh, warfarin or heparin or something like that. So that's the hardening of the arteries, clogging of the arteries. Now, the other thing that is important here is called flexibility of the artery. You may think that the heart is the pump that just drives the blood, that the squeezing of the heart is enough to drive the blood from the heart all the way through the big arteries, all the way to the end, to the capillaries. But that's not so. When, when the heart squeezes, every, you know, one, two, three, it squeezes around 70 to 80 times a minute or 150 times if you're in really high output situation, right? Um, and every time it squeezes, it ejects about 100 milliliters, about three and a half ounces of blood. So that's uh, about this much. Yeah, something like that. Three, four ounces, right? And so as that goes into the pipe, visualize a garden hose, when you squeezed a little bit of fluid into it, it travels through it as, a, as an expansion, like that it creates an extra volume. 
So it's not a straight flow. It's a, it's a flow that's pulsing. And the artery is supposed to be helping by expanding as this bolus of blood arrives and contracting right after it. So it's this squeezing action. And you could visualize if you're, if you've ever filled sausages, you know that when you squeeze it, that thing is moving along. The arteries are constructed of a smooth muscle and this smooth muscle is supposed to contract right through. So every time a heartbeat goes, there's a wave traveling, right? So this is 60 or 70 times a minute, like that. So the nutrient that controls this flexibility and this ability to expand is called nitric oxide, NO. And there are substances that are helping us have more nitric oxide available. Um, we have them on the website under the algae. Eclonia cava is supremely effective at this. The other thing, an amino acid called L-arginine is great at this, right? So, which of course the Eclonia cava is the natural way of helping the body raise the L-arginine. There are people who have been supplementing L-arginine to help with high blood pressure. Ah, this is the point about high blood pressure, which is if the hose is stiff, and doesn't expand to allow this squirt of blood to go through, then the blood pressure rises. That's the first number, systolic. If your systolic is high, your flexibility of your arteries is diminished. You need to work on that. So nitric oxide, supremely important. We have several products in that. Uh, Algorand is one of them. Uh, we have also Aura Sil, Aura Fit, and Aura Max. These are loaded with the um, uh, Eclonia. Plus, of course, they are rich in Sil, Silica. And Silica is the building block of connective tissue. And connective tissue is what your arteries are made of. Not just your arteries. All of your body is built with connective tissue. Right? Your skin, hair, nails, bones, your liver, everything, right? Even your liver is, for example, a, a structure of connective tissue upon which specialized liver cells are hanging. Your bone is a mesh of connective tissue that has calcification built into it to make it really stiff. I don't know if you've ever done it, but if you take a chicken bone or something bone and put it in vinegar and dissolve the calcium out of it, you end up with this floppy, flippy, cartilage-like object, which is the bone fully decalcified. That's, that's the collagen. That's the connective tissue. So we need silica for that. That's your number one nutrient. And then, of course, for health of bones, you need to have minerals. So boron, strontium, and the calcium, magnesium. Here's an interesting bit about blood pressure again. Um, you can have an imbalance between calcium and magnesium. Calcium controls the contraction, stiffening, shortening. Magnesium controls the relaxation, the opening and lengthening. So every heartbeat signaled by calcium this way, magnesium that way, right? So you need to have both. What's problematic is that our diet, our soil are deficient in magnesium. And with that, you will end up with magnesium deficiency. So if you have high blood pressure, you may need more magnesium. Your doctor will try and prescribe to you a calcium channel beta blocker which is sort of like limiting how far you can push the gas pedal. But the magnesium is more like the brake, which means that you can actually pull back, right? So it's easier to go natural with magnesium or healthier because there are no side effects to that. There are effects. Magnesium will also speed up your elimination, which means that you will also... Uh, 
be less constipated. So if you are, then definitely need magnesium. The other mineral that's needed is potassium. Sodium and potassium are also two controlling minerals. And oftentimes there is deficiency in potassium. It's very common if you are feeling tired, have not enough energy, falling asleep after dinner, um, just dragging, whatever, you probably are deficient in potassium. Potassium is fairly easily obtained from apple cider vinegar. It's loaded with that. Two tablespoons a day of apple cider vinegar and off you go. Potassium is in fruit and in potatoes, vegetables in general. So there are body types who need more of that, right? So one, calcium, magnesium, two, sodium, potassium, three, uh, ACE. Doctors will prescribe ACE inhibitors. That stands for adiponectin controlling enzyme, which is something to do with how hard your body is controlling the blood pressure. So when you, <laughs> interesting sidebar, the ACE inhibitor or the ACE pathway is how the corona C19 has been getting into people's bloods or people's system. The way it infects a person is by blocking the ACE pathway. So when you take an ACE inhibitor for your blood pressure, you stand a much greater chance of having an infection, getting it hard than if you were not. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting sidebar. So uh, metabolic syndrome X. Metabolic syndrome happens when you are uh, having high blood pressure, high glucose level, and overweight. All of which I've described, really, right? The blood pressure is here because of the inflammation. Uh, the glucose is here because the, the fuel is too hot and obesity is here because the insulin is working and is depositing all the excess energy into fat reserves. And the solution is always the same. Change your diet. Now, this, this particular situation is usually resolved by going on a vegetarian high fat diet. So lots of olive oil, lots of butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, those are all very helpful. The fruit oils are healthy, right? Avocado is a fruit. Olive is a fruit. Coconut is a fruit. Seed oils, not so much. Especially the sunflower, safflower, corn, those types of oils, they are very high in omega-6, which is the stiffer fat rather than the omega-3, which is the lighter fat. And the omega-3 is very helpful in maintaining uh, health in the, um, in the tissues like your heart, right? Like you will be told <laughs> that you should be supplementing omega-3s. DHA and EPA, these are typically found in fish oil. So uh, hmm. going back to the metabolic ideas, we have people who are primarily hunters, typically living in cold climates, climates, at least, you know, the Northern Europe type of things where there are winters and there are not vegetables year round. So that's the typical hunter. And they do well on the steak and salad and sauerkraut and that sort of diet. The um, fishermen, the coastals, British Isles, French, Greek, that's the colder fishermen or the Africans, right? Like a lot of the Africans that ended up in the uh, United States typically as now children of slaves were taken from the coastal areas 
and sold as slaves. So their original diet would have been coconut, fish, shorebirds, and some tropical fruits and veggies, right? So they, they should not be eating like an Italian farmer, that's for sure. Anyway, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the metabolic syndrome, about people having the dysregulation of all this energetics. One of the measures that you will see is called A1C. A1C gives you about, it gives you the picture of your red blood cells and gives you the picture of how well you're managing your insulin long term. Normal healthy level is about 5.4. Anything below 6 is considered passable. Anything above 6 is you have a serious problem. So govern yourself accordingly. If you have a high A1C, you're eating a wrong kind of diet. Probably too hot, as I defined it here, which is eating too much carbohydrate and not enough fat. So what else is important? Carnitine, L-carnitine found in meat, right? Carnitine helps you burn fat. So when you, you can supplement carnitine, it's available. And um, another fancy supplement is called D-ribose. That's uh, well liked because it helps with the uh, creation of the ATP. We have taken some natural ways to do that. We have uh, C60. C60, intense C60 on our website is a very efficient supplier of the antioxidant damage preventive tools. So if you are suffering from oxidative stress, which you will experience as aches, pains, stiffness, and the likes, then the C60 will help you reduce that. Um, for the ATP, we actually have a product called ATP Energy. It's based on life crystals and on fulvic acid. Fulvic acid is great at helping the cells to detoxify themselves, get rid of cytotoxicity, the, the natural leftovers of combustion, sort of like the exhaust in the in the automobile, right? Like you will have some exhaust from the energy conversion. And if you don't have efficient metabolic cleansing, you will start building up toxicity. That's what cleansing is all about. We need to flush it out. Okay, so I should actually just tell you about this great product that we have. It's called Heart Studies Formula. This was built by Javari back in the 1990s based on all the heart studies that came up. I remember when he was developing it, it was a stack of paper three feet high, just all printed up and he read it all, absorbed it and realized that there are multiple ways that you can stack this together. What you have in here are, for example, coenzyme Q10, grapeseed extract known as resveratrol and vitamins and lecithin and uh, those those are anti-aging things right there's lysine lecithin and algae that helps to uh, stop viral infections uh, lysine proline arginine vitamin a vitamin a c e zinc that's all in there it will help with immunity oh i should say this the the heart studies formula unlike all of the other exula products is not to be taken with food like all of the other ones are s essentially salad ingredients like you eat them as food or with food in a smoothie or any in a salad or such but the heart studies formula needs to be taken away from food, especially away from proteins. And the reason for that is it's loaded with amino acids. And these amino acids, we need to get them through the stomach into the small intestine. Um, 
so that they can get into the bloodstream and do the work that they are intended to do. If you take the heart studies formula with food, the amino acids will recombine into enzymes and will help digest the food, which is fine. You'll digest well, but it's not great because you're not getting the benefit that you're seeking. So you need to take the heart formula um, about half an hour to 40 minutes before, before for food on an empty stomach. So when you're hungry, that's when you eat it. Um, the other thing is that because it will dramatically reliquify the uh, cholesterol that has been absorbed or stored, you need to expect a spike in cholesterol. I, I remember a story a fellow called, he said uh, that he had an ultrasound and his carotid, those are the ones here in the neck, arteries were 80% occluded. That means that he only had 20% of pipe left to feed his brain. He got on the two month program with heart formula. The way we do it is you take six bottles of heart studies formula and two bottles of Exula Iridesa and two bottles of apple fiber. So this is not a cheap thing. You're spending about $1,200 or $20 a day for the period. But what you do there is you push your body into a whole new regime. This fellow, after having done the two eight weeks, two months, went for a recheck and reported back with 20% occlusion on his carotid artery. So he stayed on the, pro on the product now for maintenance ongoing and uh, has had a wonderful experience. So the normal run of this would be you take two teaspoons of this every day, long term, that's just maintenance level. But if you have a diagnosis of serious trouble, then you want to just run it hard. And what we have is you do a one week ramp up. You start with half a teaspoon, go into one teaspoon to two teaspoon to two teaspoon three times a day. So when you're at the full rate, you're taking six teaspoons of this product a day for six weeks, and then you ramp down. And the reason you do the ramp up is because it's going to take some time to get used to it. And we don't want to just throw you into the fire. We want to build to it. Okay. So that's the heart studies formula. I'm going to put that in here. Somebody's asking if I would please put the link in. I will do that. So, um, here goes the link to Heart Studies Formula. And here goes the link to the Exula Iridesa, which is the companion product. And we could possibly consider also putting in apple fiber, which is the, I mean, you can use any fiber. You can use oatmeal or you can use Metamucil or whatever, but this apple fiber is great because um, because the apple fiber is the gentlest of fibers and it is um, also highly absorbable. It has high pectin and the pectin is absorbing toxins. We have a whole bunch of articles in the website about the... Um, about the heart studies formula. I'm just going to post one of them, but if you search on heart formula, you will see. There are several of these articles describing what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to also post you a link about the Eclonia. It's probably, it's probably a wise thing. You'll find it in in this category. This is where you find the products with nitric oxide. They are in the algae category. Anyway, um, heart formula. 
what to be said about it. Um, well, there's energy stuff in it, endurance, better sex, better bones, better eyesight. See, all of these things that we associate with aging, all the decline is either more inflammation or less energy. So when we improve circulation, when we strengthen the heart, when we strengthen the cardiovascular system, when we improve the energy conversion, all of the things that are going on in the body will work. All right, let me just review the questions here. Um, Okay, so Nancy says she's off of uh, statins and now her cholesterol is up. So Nancy, the problem is the diet. Like I need you to realize that you need to take carbohydrates out of your diet. You need to go on salad and steak. You can certainly go on the uh, Exula superfood type of thing. That's going to make your life better, but you need to change your diet. The Lipicept will help, but it's not enough. Okay, what else? What if I don't want to lose weight? Yes, you can take this. Okay, if uh, Irene says she's underweight, what to do? Well, if you understand your body type or your endocrine dominance, you can easily manage your weight. I have talked about this many times, but I will push that here anyway. So um, look for this link to podcast that's called Weight Loss Secrets. The Weight Loss Secrets talks about eating right to your endocrine dominance. Yeah. And same question, Irene, you need to change your diet. Yeah, Oracil is an Exula product. Exula is the brand. So we're a little confused here. Hmm. So if you're trying to give yourself a metabolic boost, you can take the heart formula steady at a low dose, or you can take it for a couple of months at, at a very high dose. Just push it until you clear all of the backlog of, of the aging damage that you have done with eating not right. And then when you uh, come back, uh, you got it. You got it on a steady support. Oh, Nina says, what's the dosage? Well, it depends on your body type, depends on your weight, body size and all of that. But in general, you would be taking one bottle of iridesa a month, which is two to three teaspoons a day. On top of the six teaspoons of the heart formula. And then when you're done with it, you can stay on a couple of teaspoons of iridesa and one teaspoon of the heart formula ongoing. That would just keep you in great shape. Laurie says she's been on Neprinol five years. Of course, we sell Neprinol. Absolutely. Yeah, Neprinol is a great enzyme. You would find it in the category of systemic enzymes right on our website. I'll show you supplements, systemic enzymes. I'll put in the link. You can find all of the systemic enzymes there, including Neprinol, which I think is a good product. Um, other than the, the brand, Arthur Andrew Medical is a little pricier than others, but that's nothing bad about that. Yeah. Yeah, Neprinol is great. Um, we have Vitalzyme, Zymetol, Fibrenza. Those are all the different 
enzymes, take a look at it, you'll see. Some of it is an excellent financial value, but nothing bad about Nepernol. We sell it happily. Okay, so I think I've come to the end of my presentation here. So let's see here. Thank you very much for participating today. I hope this has been helpful. This is Martin Patella, health coach at Life Enthusiast. I'm at uh, www.life-enthusiast.com and uh, by phone at 866-543-3388. Thank you very much for being here.